Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me. I have a really fun video for you today. We are doing kind of a continuation on the White 173, the thrift store find. Uh, if you remember the last video, uh, I got it all cleaned up, um, got it oiled, and did a couple repairs. I had to get into the motor and uh, do a little uh, repair back there in order to make it work properly, but um, we didn't really get to play around with it. So hoping that uh, we'll be able to do that today. So uh, before we get started with that, I just want to uh, thank everybody so much for all of your awesome comments uh, on all of my videos. I read every one of them and you guys have just uh, said the nicest things and I just love it. And uh, so keep those coming. I, I just love reading them and, and hearing from you all. So uh, keep them coming. And I also wanted to give a big shout out to one of my sub subscribers that sent me these cool little scissors, little thread cutters. Um, they showed up in the mail. They came in a pack of 12. And I think that this person noticed that I had a lot of uh, machines around the house and I kind of needed 12 pairs of thread cutters. So um, I'll tell you what, they are super handy. I am constantly jumping around from machine to machine uh, doing various projects and I was chasing down scissors every time. So now I have a little pair of scissors at every machine and I just love them. So thank you. You know who you are. Super appreciated. So back to the white 173. This is such a cool machine. It is so cool looking and I'm just really hoping that it's going to so well for me. So um, my plan today is to get it all threaded, uh, wind a bobbin and uh, get the bobbin in here, kind of play with some of the knobs and and check out all the different features. And then once I know it's going to sew well, um, I'd like to do a test block and just kind of run some strips through here and make kind of a, a little mini quilt um, and kind of go through all the steps, um, see if it'll handle some batting and do the binding as well. So uh, that's my plan. Um, hope we can get that done today. I am going to grab some thread and a bobbin and we will get started. Okay, so I think that we will just go through an initial setup here on this machine. Um, and I th think one of the first things we should do is wind a bobbin. And I do know this machine uh, takes this kind of bobbin. I think this is kind of standard for a lot of machines or at least a, a lot of singers. Um, that's what I'm under the impression of anyway. So I'm going to wind a different color in the bobbin that I will on top. That way we can see if our uh, thread tensions and everything are, are uh, correct. So we'll put some of this nice uh, maroon thread into the bobbin. And I believe that it is just going to run right around here. I have uh, instructions on the inside cover of how to thread the machine, but there's no bobbin <laughs> instructions. So I'm kind of guessing, I think that this is how the bobbin thread would run over to this, uh, to this part. So we'll give this a shot and see if we can make it work. Flip that up. Oh, and I want to disengage my clutch. That's good. Okay. And I am plugged in. We'll give this a whirl here. All right, it's working. Okay, I'm not going to wind it totally full, um, just maybe about 
half full there. That should be enough for our little test today. So that worked well. Snip off this little tail there. Okay, see if I can figure out how this goes in here. Um, when I got this machine, it did have a bobbin in here, so um, I kind of made a note of how it needed to go. Um, so I think that's going to slide right in and under there. And sometimes with a little bobbin case like this, you can grab your thread and kind of give it a little drop and test your tension. But if I do that, this will fall out. It doesn't really stay in here very well. So um, just by pulling it, I can tell that it's kind of, it feels pretty good. Um, I don't know that I want to tighten it or loosen it right now. Um, if I seem to have an issue with the bobbin tension when we test it, then I'll, I'll deal with that. Um, but that's just this little screw right here. And most bobbin cases um, will just have a, a screw that's very easy to find, very easy to adjust. So we'll see if we can get this stuck in here. think that's in there correctly. Okay. Now get this clutch engaged. And I'm going to put some nice blue thread in here. And I'm going to consult my instructions here on this uh, inside this little flap area. Um, so we do need to come under th this one and then back around here and then down through the tension assembly. And then through this uptake here. down. There's a little hook here and a little one down closer to the needle. And I think that is it. Now we get to go through the needle here. And we'll see if I can do this without a needle threader. Ah, nice. Okay. So that feels like it's got a little bit of tension on it. I'm right at the normal uh, on the tensioner. So it feels like it might be a tiny bit tight, but we'll see. And we'll roll our wheel towards us and see if we can get that bobbin thread to catch. And there it is. It just took a couple times, but we got it. So I've got my blue and my red thread there. So good, good. We're off to a running start so far here. Okay. So my feed dogs, I have a high and a low and a down on the feed dogs. So I'm going to keep it at high. Um, not quite sure why I would need a low, but I'll figure that out over time, I'm sure, with maybe different thicknesses of fabric or something. So we've um, got our stitch length here. I'm going to stay right in the middle. I kind of like to have everything just right in the middle, 
middle here, middle here is a good starting point, um, and then we can adjust uh, as needed there. So, um, yeah, I think that we are maybe ready to see if this will sew. So, I've got some little scraps of test fabric here, and we'll just give it a whirl here. Ah. Nice. It's very smooth. Cool. Thread feels a tiny bit tight just when I'm pulling on it. And it looks like a nice stitch. Um, the bobbin looks good, but the top looks a little bit tight. I'm seeing a little tiny bit of that uh, bobbin thread coming up and this top thread is kind of just in a line. It's not making a, a definite stitch that you can see. It's just kind of a line. So I think I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. Let's see if that'll help. Um, one thing I also need to check is this um, presser foot tension. Um, you can kind of put your piece of material under here, drop your foot down, and then just kind of pull on it and see if you have any give um, back and forth. And that seems really tight to me. I, it seems like it's, it's got a lot of pressure there. So I'm going to loosen this up a little bit and uh, that might help things. Pop that back down. And it's got just a little, little tiny bit of movement there. I think that'll be better. So we'll give this a shot again. Bobbin still looks good and that does look better. It's not as in a straight line. This is our first one. It's just kind of a straight line of thread here. Um, but this one you can definitely, you know, see each stitch there. And the back looks great as well. I'm not seeing any blue on the back and I'm not seeing any red coming up uh, on the front from the bobbin. So that looks pretty good to me as far as tension goes. Um, I'm going to sew another line here and we'll test out our stitch length. See how that's working out here. I always like to start with the, um, especially on older machines, I always put the needle down before I start. I don't know how necessary that is, but it's just kind of a habit I got into on mostly on the older machines because they kind of suck that thread in sometimes when you don't do that. All right. So tiny, tiny stitch. And then we'll go all the way up to eight, which is a long stitch. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So I started out normal. And then you can see tiny, tiny, tiny stitches there and then our long stitch there. So that's pretty cool. That's nice and straight and I like that. Still good tension on top and bottom. Wonderful. All right. So we'll try a 90 degree angle here. Needle down and we'll I need to move this down to the middle. I'm 
And if it makes a good 90, then we know we're in a pretty good spot on our tension. Looks wonderful. Good 90 degree turns there, and the thread's not pulling across that corner at all. That looks great. All right, last thing I want to do is uh, maybe try to make some curves, see how it'll handle that. I like to um, make a lot of curvy stitching. In a lot of my projects so um, if it'll handle something like that then that'll make me happy how cool that is. You can see each stitch. Um, it's not as beautiful and perfect as like the 201, the Singer 2012 will do, um, but that's a great stitch. That's really cool. And, um, you know, it just it handled all of these, all of the curves and all of the sharp uh, corners just perfectly. So, this is going to be a great machine. I'm really excited about this. That's awesome. All right. Well, um, yeah, test successful, I suppose. Um, I guess next step is I'd like to uh, kind of piece some strips together and just kind of check out how that's going to work out. And we'll just make ourselves a little mini quilt. We'll put some binding in it and I'll run across the binding and all three layers of the quilt sandwich and see how it does there. And then I'll uh, run around the edge, uh, do some binding, and we'll see how it handles that as well. So on to the next step. All right, so I've got some strips that I am going to sew together, make us a little quilt top for our mini quilt and see how this machine will do with that. Um, I picked a bunch of blue uh, shades. I love blue and with this being a teal bluish machine, I thought these matched pretty well. So um, we're just going to kind of piece together some strips here and see how she handles it with how well our test run did. I, I bet it's gonna work out just fine. I love sewing with scraps, so this is right up my alley here. I just want to get kind of a straight edge on this one. And I am going to purposely kind of make these a little wonky just because I like things like that. This machine seems like it's really strong. Love it. I think it's going to be a, a really good one for us. And 
that time I didn't seat that needle in first. I just kind of stuck it in there and hit the pedal and it worked. It sucked that thread in a little bit, but uh, not so much that it unthreaded the needle. So that was cool. All right. purposely went crooked on that because I, I don't want to make these all just perfectly straight. I kind of want them to be a little bit, a little bit wonky just because. Mm, I just love all these blues. almost starting to look like the ocean a little bit. I love that. And that is not a very straight edge. I don't know who cut that one. <laughs> it's probably me. <laughs> I'll give it a little bit of a lean there, maybe. <laughs> machine is fast too. It doesn't have a speed control. Um, it, it has the speed control obviously on the, the pedal itself, but uh, no actual knob up here to uh, limit the speed. Um, so when you press that pedal, boy, it goes. It is pretty cool. Excess and our last strip, this dark, dark blue.
fun with scraps. Okay. And my iron is heated up. So I am just going to give this a nice little press here. And I'm not terribly worried about which way the seams are going. Um, it just doesn't matter. This is just our little practice quilt, mini quilt. Oops. make those seams go that way. Ooh, that turned out really pretty. Nice and flat, that is important. So, probably should get this trimmed up into a rectangle, I suppose. And we'll kind of go off of this bottom edge here. And I think. I want to cut the least amount off of this that I have to. We'll maximize our quilt top here. I've got to go, I gotta go with the shortest piece I, I've got here on the side. So we'll just keep it right there. And these, because I love scraps so much. Anything over an inch big, I save for crumb piecing. So I'm going to save that, put that in my crumb pile, and we are going to be sewing with crumbs real soon. I've got a big, a big plan for crumbs at some point that I want to share with you guys. So I hope that you will stick around for that. Um, let's see. I think I can take it to this three-quarter mark. Those are big enough to save. And this Well, I got to stay within my shortest part of that right here. So we'll just take it right to that three quarter mark. Perfect. All right. So there's our quilt top. That turned out really cute. Looks like ocean waves. I love it. Um, okay, well, I am going to get this sandwiched uh, together with some batting. I'll find a scrap piece that I can use for the back. And then uh, I'll meet you back here. And we'll run this through the machine and do some quilting on it and see if it'll handle that okay. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so I got my quilt sandwich all uh, made here. I have my quilt top. I have some batting. And then I found a piece of this pretty turquoise um, that was big enough to make my backing. So I got it all pinned together. I just have six uh, basting pins in it. And uh, I'm going to try to run this through the machine and see how it handles it. So um, I'm hoping this reminds me of ocean waves. So I'm kind of just going to do some, some nice wavy lines through this and, and see how well it'll do that for me. Um, oh, and also on my batting, um, I just zigzagged a bunch of batting scraps together. So that's what I'm working with today. This is uh, not only a test quilt, it is a little scrap quilt. So 
we are just going to run this through. I swapped out my bobbin thread. Uh, you know, it was that dark red. I put some turquoise in here because I think that'll match my backing a little bit better than that red. And I also increased my stitch length just a tiny, tiny bit. I turned it up to five. Um, I just uh, thought that that would be better. I just don't want the quilting to be tight, tight stitching. So I did loosen that up a little bit. So um, we're just going to uh, give this a try here and see how well it does. this just so it's not in our way here. I don't want to run it over. All right. So I'm just going to kind of work my way up and down this thing with some wavy lines. The stitching is very consistent. It looks really nice. The stitching actually looks better uh, with the three layers of the quilt than it did just with two layers of fabric. Um, this is just turning out beautifully. remove these pins as we get closer to them. This is a very easy machine to sew on. Okay, now 
just work our way across this other side here. Look how nicely that's turning out here. Looks like ocean waves, or water. I love it. This machine is just really uh, living up to my expectations, I gotta say. Okay, so I got my binding all uh, prepared. I, this is um, how I like to do binding. I like to use the backing, fold it around, and uh, just kind of stitch along this edge. Um, I didn't really show the preparation of the binding uh, here. I do have another video um, that where I just do binding only. So go check that out if you want to see my whole process on that. Um, basically, I uh, cut my batting flush with my quilt top after I pull my backing out of the way so I don't cut my backing. Then I cut the backing one inch uh, bigger all the way around and then two folds um, and iron as I go and then I pin it and I know this looks like a lot of pins but um, trust me it is a lot easier having it pinned when you're running it through the machine at this step um, than if you were to be just kind of trying to fold it over by hand as you as you sew that binding down so anyway I am just going to um, zip around this and see how this machine will handle this binding and as I get to each pin, I will pull each pin out so I don't run over them. So let's uh, see how this works here. And I also changed out my uh, top thread for a turquoise as well so it matches the, the binding and backing a little better. So I just kind of like to start um, right in the middle of one of the edges here. And I'm basically just going to sew right along, kind of close to, to that edge, all the way around. And I haven't used reverse yet, so I'm going to reverse my first few stitches here. And hey, reverse works. That's awesome. This machine seems to do very well with multiple layers of fabrics and batting. So 
This is really nice. And as I get to the corner, I always like to just take one extra stitch forward and then one stitch backward and then pivot right where you think you want to start going down the next edge there. machine seems kind of quiet too for how powerful it is. It's not loud and clunky or anything. It's just really smooth and it's wonderful. All right. Boy, <laughs> this is looking great. I'm super pleased with how this is turning out so far. I think the only thing I would like this machine to have is a needle down feature. So that needle is always down when you stop. Um, you know, that awesome feature that some of the newer machines have. I get used to that on my newer Juki. So when I sew on these older machines, that's the one thing I miss is having that needle down every time you stop. But, you just can't have everything, especially with the older machines. And that's the fun of it. You get to experience something new and different on each machine that you try out. So that's pretty cool. And one stitch backward there. One extra stitch forward and then I'm just going back one stitch there just to lock that corner in place I just always want to make sure that corner is not going to come out in the wash or anything like that to the end. Just back stitch a tiny little bit and we are done. And snippy snippy on our ends. All right. There is our little quilt. Well, I would say that the white 173 did a great job. It passed all of the tests. It uh, pieced really well. It quilted and it did the binding as well. And uh, it just did it all beautifully. And I am just super happy with this machine. I'm super, super grateful that I found it in the thrift store, especially for the price that I found it for. It was just an incredible find. And I really feel really fortunate that I was able to pick it up that day. Um, I do feel a little bad for the people that uh, donated it. Um, I'm sure that they had donated it because it wasn't running properly. And uh, super glad that we were able to uh, 
get it all torn apart and fixed up and back in working order again. So um, it was just a really fun process. I have just really enjoyed bringing you guys along for uh, not only this one, but for all of the machines that I've showed you so far. Um, I have a lot more to show you. I have uh, machines all around the house that I have projects planned for, and I would like to just bring you along for every one of them. So um, thank you again for all of your awesome comments and for watching and for liking and subscribing. I just super appreciate all of you guys. And uh, like I always say, we have a lot of fun projects planned. As you can see behind me, I'm in the planning phase of another one. So um, I do hope to bring you along for that as well. So again, um, thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.